Hi, in this topic uh, I'll just introduce this, uh, all the, all the uh, topics that are to follow. Um, now, what we're going to do in this introduction, we'll have a look at uh, why automation helps and where it helps. Um, now, it helps primarily because we're human and we make mistakes. I mean, the expression is, to err is human. Um, but we don't we don't make mistakes in a random fashion. We don't just make it all over the place. There are there are specific patterns to how we make mistakes. Now a lot of research has been done in uh, the safety critical industries, particularly air transport, uh, largely tracing back to uh, James Reason is the main uh, name in this lot. And uh, he divided things into the types of mistakes that uh, people make, which were largely mistakes when we really ought to know better, and mistakes when we don't know better. Now, that's, that's fine. Now, what we can automate is um, a lot of the times um, the, the, um, we can automate to help us to avoid the mistakes, the slips and the lapses. That is, um, slips are, are things where we really want to know better but we just forget about something. Uh, or uh, we make the wrong decision, we lose track of what we're doing. Uh, so they are slips and lapses. But in the other area, where it's, it's just actually a straight up mistake, um, this is where we, we don't possibly know better, we possibly we don't have all the information there. And uh, automation can help in that area, but in a different way. Now, to uh, put that, to, to illustrate that uh, more thoroughly, uh, there has been a, a continuum developed about the type of mistakes or the type of activities that we do uh, starting from the, the very uh, conscious deliberate activities where we might be doing something for the first time and we're very mindful of what we're doing and very, very careful of what we're doing. Uh, so we tend to pay a lot of attention. It takes a lot of effort and it takes a long time. Now in those circumstances we tend not to make too many mistakes. We might get it wrong because we don't know, but we won't make a, we won't sort of lose track of things. But the other end of the continuum, these are uh, activities or actions where we're very familiar with what we're doing, they're very skillful activities, and we've done it a hundred times. But in those circumstances, it's very easy to either overlook something. Uh, or to assume that uh, what we should do is, is A, when in fact we should do B. That is, it looks like it ought to be this way, but in fact when you look at it closely, it is in fact requires something else. Now when, when actions are very automatic, as I say, when we've done them a hundred times, it's very easy to go on the assumption that, oh yeah, it looks like one of those, when in fact it's not. Now, automation can improve quality when it helps us to not forget things. Now, examples of this are uh, your simple uh, checklist of things. Uh, a checklist is a basic technology, and that's fine. Uh, it, it goes through and says, have you done this, and have you done that, and is this that way, and you know, checklists have been the savior of the uh, air transport industry, and they have crept into software development as well. Now, a certain amount of automation is essentially just a, a checklist. They're also um, prevent things being overlooked, keeping track of issues, keeping track of defects, instead of losing them somewhere. On the other end of the spectrum where we're doing mindful activities, and one example of this is uh, project planning, it's not a routine activity. Uh, so we're doing it possibly for the first time. Now, an automated project planning is probably not a good thing. Um, it's likely to enforce a particular style of project that was never intended. But in those circumstances, some things can help us to make better decisions by structuring the information or um, getting more, or, more ordered about it. For example, um, planning depends on estimating how big the tasks are. An estimation is uh, a very resource intensive task. So if you have some tool to help you with your estimation, then you're probably going to make a better plan. So automation can help in, in those places. Now automation in the wrong places, so for example applying um, a, a standard template uh, project plan, 
uh, runs the risk that you'll you'll apply the the um, the template in the wrong place. That is, you won't sufficiently appreciate the specific circumstances, and as a consequence, you'll just assume something and just basically get it wrong. Now, that kind of automation does not help and is not good. It is likely to degrade quality rather than improve quality. So the limits uh, of what you can automate really do depend on how much you uh, you understand what you're doing. I mean, if if it's something that we're familiar with, we know, we thoroughly understand it, then you probably can automate it. But if we don't quite know what we're doing in the first place, and examples are estimation and risk management, that kind of thing, then automating something that we don't understand would simply make a, you know, a, a bigger mess uh, because we're just going to automate what we don't understand. We, we will just get wrong more of what we got wrong. So. That brings us to the question of, well, should we automate, and what should we automate? Well, by all means, we should automate the routine tasks that are so thoroughly familiar that um, we, we've basically got them under control. Now, examples of those are workflow management, uh, defect tracking, issue tracking, um, the uh, build and release uh, management kind of stuff, uh, syntax checking, um, style checking of code, those kind of things, I mean, basically things like spell checkers, a, a variety of automation. Those kind of things we can automate and should automate. These are mundane tasks that we don't have to deal with. The kind of things that we ought not to automate are, for want of a better term, the fuzzy front end tasks where we actually have to think about what it is we're trying to do. And there, possibly the automation can support our uh, discovery and understanding of what we're doing but it would not replace it. So in summary then, we, we as humans tend to make mistakes and we can use automation to try and prevent the slips and lapses that uh, we tend to make when things are very familiar and routine. We should not overly automate those things where we're actually having to think about it a bit. So with that, we can now examine um, automation in the various parts of software development. So I look forward to seeing you in the next few uh, topics.